Well, good evening, everybody. Hello. We're just so happy to have you with us tonight, and we have had a little technical difficulties, but you know what? The devil is a liar, and God is glorified. We're going to terrify him tonight. Hallelujah, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We get to be tight, because we're streaming in a different way tonight. But we've got the best, best, best teaching tonight. I just can't wait to get going. So, hallelujah. Kim, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. So we are. Is the volume good? Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, like my fine wife said, we knew the enemy did not want us to do so this good. teaching tonight. And, uh, but he wins, he loses, we win every time. That's right. And you know what it's about tonight? You ready? <laughs> it says the devil didn't make us do it. That's right. Well, it actually says you do it, but us counts too. Okay. That's it. There's one thing that we can know with absolute certainty, and that is that behind every evil activity on planet Earth, mm. there's a single mastermind, Satan, the devil, the enemy, old slew foot, the thief, the dude with the pitchfork, or the one who's going to spend eternity in hell. That's However you want right. to describe him, that's exactly what he is. That's exactly what he is, and he's but, trying to show his little self tonight. Hallelujah. But God is... Uh, talk for a minute, baby. God is good. I mean, this is the truth. You know, regardless of what we call him, like Carol said, he is the reason that things uh, have been the way they have because it says right in the in the Bible itself, you know, um, wow, and where am I? Okay. You know, it says in the Garden of Eden that uh, the devil was behind it all, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The devil is the reason the Garden of Eden was the way it was. I mean, changed into, or they got kicked out of the garden. Anyway, let me just start off in this. Okay. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, in the... Uh, Contemporary English version. That's right. Thank you. Paul is addressing those who have found the Lord and explains the devil's role in their past and the influence he can have still on those who do not know to obey the Lord. It says, quote, you followed the ways of this world and obeyed the devil. He rules the world, and his spirit is power over everyone who doesn't obey God. You know, it is important to understand who the real enemy is. It's not the person who lied to you about you at work so that they could get a promotion and use your ideas to, you know, and get the credit. It's not the person who uh, broke into your house and stole your goods. It's not the company that, you know, uh, ripped you off out of your retirement fund. It's not the person who sells drugs at the to the students at the junior high that your children go to. It's not the person who lured your spouse into an adulterous relationship. The real enemy is the devil, and you know, we need to make no mistake about it. He's not after you us personally, really. He's he he doesn't have us, so he's after the God that's in us. He tries to control and, you know, holds on to those who are deceived in this world. But, you know, the children of darkness are realized they're being deceived to achieve the devil's purpose. But the real, real sad thing in life is when the devil can deceive Christians and use them to do his work. That's that's the really yeah, and, and sad situation. It is, and it's also important to understand that we're not fighting the devil. Right. The devil is fighting us. That's true. And... Uh, um, but that's that's the real key. Yeah. Uh, Tim, there's let you walk over and figure out how to adjust. Remember last time we did something to get the sound. The oh yeah. The Enjoy. microphone. Just take the mouse and sound it wherever where we need to do it. Again. We're gonna just for a second. We're gonna try to make it louder instead of having to talk louder. Yeah. All right. Just for now. Anyway, uh, what was the next one? Ephesians 6.12 in the Amplified Bible puts it this way, puts it in perspective for us. It says, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against de depotism, despotisms, I'm not good at that word, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers in this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness, in the heavenly supernatural sphere. You know, when you name the true villain in your spiritual warfare and take him to the heavenly court, 
<clears throat> you begin to benefit from God's system and what he has set up for retribution and restoration in our lives. Um, the good news is that God is the heavenly judge. He is the father. He's the one who wrote the book and we can count on his word. And that's what we need to not, what happens sometimes is we want to fall back into the world system to fight our battles when God's system is the absolute one that is going to work for us. Psalm 56, 50 verse 6 says, and the heavens shall declare the righteousness for God is judge himself, Selah. And Salah means, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it says, stop and think about this. Yes. So not only is he the righteous judge. That's right. But Jesus, our older brother, is our defense attorney. Amen. He's our defense attorney. Amen. Romans 8.34 in the Amplified Bible. Who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, the Messiah who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God actually pleading as he intercedes for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about Proverbs 6.31? We like that one. Yes, we do. But if the thief be found. That's right, like tonight. If the thief be found, <laughs> is found out, properly identified, he must restore seven times what he stole. He must give the whole substance of his house, if necessary, to meet his fine. So we're not fighting flesh and blood. That's what we decided. Right. The enemy of our souls that's the one that we're really fighting. And make no mistake about it. God's justice system is much different than that of the world. That's right. The world justice system is less, interest, less interested in restitution for the victim than to make sure the fair treatment of the criminal. But in God's system, that's not the way it works because right. he's in, interested in rest, restitution and retribution. Yeah, that's right. I like right. that. Um, now... Thinking about what the enemy has stolen from you, one of the things we encourage you to do is to sit down and and um, sit, make a list of everything the enemy has stolen from you and, and multiply it out. I mean, not multiply it, but list it all out. Right. The, if you remember the date, put the date, put where it was and the amount. And, and once you do that, then you get to add the heavenly interest. Proverbs 6.31. And we heavenly just interest. talked about it. Is seven times. That's right. Seven times. Then put it somewhere where you can see that amount, and then you need to boldly claim it right. for that restoration. And you really need to. Now, you're coming before the throne of God. He is the righteous judge. He sits up there. He has written the book. God is going to take what it is that we, we're like people on the witness stand. So when we come before the Lord, we know this. We know that to the right hand of the Father is Jesus, who is our defense attorney. And actually, in Hebrews, there's a scripture that actually refers to him as kind of a defense attorney, really, for us, some translations. And then you've got Satan, who is the prosecuting attorney. Remember over in Revelation where it says, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So he is, it says he's a, the accuser of the brethren who was day and night bringing things before God. So here is God sitting on the throne. Jesus has brought you by the blood of the lamb, right? He, you know, he, we are born again through him. But the words that come out of our mouth, our testimony, when we bring these things before him, it's not a matter to go, God, get these people. It's a matter to bring it before him and leave it in his hands and thank him that he will do this for you and not let it come out of your mouth, anything that's going to take it away from that courtroom. In other words, you don't want to take it back. You want to leave it in that courtroom in that, uh, I mean, I mean, leave it so that God can judge. You take your hands off so God can do the work. That's exactly right. I mean, it says, uh, I mean, we don't want to hold on to it. We want to release it into his hands and, and thank him and say, this is before the court. When the enemy wants to come in and go, oh, well, you know, so-and-so was say, no, I have put that before the throne room of the Lord, and I am not making negative confessions. I'm not having any iniquity in my heart. I am holding on to this until I see it come to pass. Hallelujah. What the enemy wants to do is, is to get us to look at people. Right. Look at everything except him. Yeah. And, the and real deceiver. The real deceiver. Um, but it's important for us to recognize that our battle is not against flesh and blood, That's right. but against principalities, powers, evil rulers, and spiritual wickedness. Exactly. And we have to look beyond that. We have to look past flesh and blood. Now, see, Peter saw right past flesh and blood 
I went to the straight straight to the source of the problem in Acts five verses one through eleven. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the example of Ananias and Sapphira. That is a great example. They had secretly devised a plot to gain prestige with their Christian brothers and sisters. They decided that they could get the same recognition Barnabas got. When Barnabas, Barnabas. when Bar I said Barnabas, didn't I? Okay, yeah. yeah. Barnabas uh, went out and sold what he had and gave it all to the work of the, of, right. of, of the ministry, of, of, the the church. Church, of the church. And, and they thought they could <laughs> deceive Peter and the, the believers and, and get the same recognition but keep a portion of the money for themselves. But the scripture says that Peter saw through their lying deception and laid axe to the tree by confronting the real liar. In fact, Acts chapter 5 verse 3. It says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart to lie? But Peter knew the real culprit. Satan. That's right. And, and so he boldly went to the courtroom of God. And as a result, both Ananias and Sapphira received immediate judgment for allowing the enemy of God to operate through them. Mm. And they paid the ultimate price for that because of what I consider their three, four sinful attitudes. It was three, but I just we added a fourth one this afternoon. Four sinful att attitudes. First, they coveted um, the praise that Barnabas had received as an act of his generosity. Um, it's not scriptural to covet praise or position. You know, I've seen people in church services and conferences lose it because they weren't seated in the right position. I remember being at a conference a year or so ago. What they thought was the right position. What they thought was the right position. And, and I remember this, he was a pastor, he flown into this conference. And, and during the first session, he sat uh, on the aisle seat on the second row in the center section. But before the next session began, he uh, one of the ushers asked him to move across the aisle to the aisle seat on the third row. So basically, over one, back one. And he really just went off on that usher. You know, who do you think you are? You don't have the authority to move me around. This is my seat. You know, leave me. I mean, he was really, he did everything but cuss him out. And, and that's just wrong. And we have to ask ourselves, what? Well, let me put it this way. It's a shame to lose you witness over yeah. something so insignificant. And I'm sure that's not, you know, <clears throat> in retrospect, that man probably regretted that. Mm -hmm. But that's what he did. Just and from, you remember it a year later? I remember it a year later. So, yes. you know, don't covet the praise or the recognition right. that somebody else gets. Um, I remember hearing Dr. Dr. Creflo Dollar say one time that be happy with your portion. There are people who want somebody else's portion, but yet they haven't ma they haven't maximized their portion. Mm -hmm. You know what they've got. They're not maximizing yet, but yet they're wanting what somebody else has got. Mm -hmm. Well, let's don't cover what somebody else has got. Let's do the most we can with what we got. Right. And I think that's the key. And be happy. Second example or second point about Ananias and Sapphira was that they were deceitful. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted everyone to think that they were giving the full purchase price for that property. When in fact they were. Acts 5 3 in the Amplified Bible. Mm. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart, <clears throat> excuse me, that you should lie to and attempt to deceive the Holy Spirit, and should, in violation of your promise, withdraw secretly and appropriate to your own use part of the price from the sale of the lamb? Now, neither yeah. Peter nor any of the disciples were demanding that everybody sell right. all their property and give it to the church. Mm. They didn't do that. They were, they were, there was no unreasonable demands being placed right. on the followers. But they wanted to deceive because they saw the praise that Barnabas got. They wanted that. So they kind of purposed in the heart and, and, and they were, you know, they said to themselves, well, we sold, you know, see what they could have done was to say, they didn't have to say, we're giving it all to you. They could have That's said, right. well, we sold some property and we'll give a good part of it to the work of the church. Right. And Peter and everybody been been praising them and going hallelujah. But see, deception got in, and they were claiming something they didn't do. Right. And when you claim something you don't do, you get in trouble. Mm. Uh, because you can't hide it from... The Holy Spirit. That's exactly right. You can't do it. Amen. Um, he knows everything. <laughs> yes, he does. So, um, and I have to say this. 
I've, I've been in meetings. Because I teach finances, sometimes people tell me everything about their finances. Uh, you know, I prayed for them and given them handkerchiefs or tissues to wash away their tears. And But I, I remember a meeting that I was at where there was a particular person that was going through extreme financial difficulty. And I had helped counsel that person on what to do to where they could get all their credit cards paid off. And I told them, I said, get rid of all your credit cards. You know, don't charge, don't, you know, this person had over $100,000 in gifts to ministries on credit cards. Mm. And I said, pay it all. We got to pay it off. Don't put anything else on it. She, I think she had four cards. I said, keep one and have them reduced to limit to $3,000 and nothing else. About two weeks later, I was at a conference and, you know, didn't realize to begin with this woman was there. And the, the speaker was saying, I know somebody's going to make 20. I feel that someone wants to make a $25,000 commitment. First person front and center was this woman. And I knew she didn't have the money. But she was there to make a $25,000 commitment. And I found out later she didn't do what I said with all the cards. And, and see, that she, there's deception on several levels. And if, if someone asks for help, you need to. Take the advice. Is that hard to say? That Around right? don't ask for advice. I don't right. ask for advice. And I told her, I said, look, she said, well, I felt, I felt, uh, I, I felt led to do it. And I said, well, then I want you to know I love you and I pray for you, but I'm through giving advice to you. Because if you don't do what I say, then I can't help you. Mm -hmm. and and, yeah, you, you, you had helped her a lot. I had helped her a lot. I mean, I would helped her get rid of $100,000 in credit card debt. Um, but... That's she was back nice. in it. She was back in it. Uh, and, and again... But some people want to just look good. They want to be the first ones down there to say, hey, you know, look at me. I'm, you know, we need to be sure we're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. And and uh, know that God spoke to you. Yes. Is it hard for me to say that? Amen. I'm a prosperity preacher, but I'm one who believes, know that you heard the voice of the Lord. Yeah. You know, when you do things like that. Um, and I'm a little different kind of prosperity preacher because... I don't believe in making gifts on a credit card that you, you can't pay it off. And we put that on our letters. And we put it on our letters, it's on our envelopes. Now, if God tells you to do it, uh, you can do it one time, but it's not a lifestyle. It's right. not a history. He that, knows uh, what's coming up, but if you don't know what's coming up, he's the only one that knows what's coming up. Yeah, well, and yeah. What you're gonna that's exactly with. right. So, understand this. Let there be no deception. Yeah. The bad thing about deception, too, I did a teaching one time, 15 Ways to Overcome Deception. Bad thing about deception on so many levels, not just financial, but in so many levels, is people don't realize they're being deceived when they're in the midst of deception. Mm. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? I think so. Um, for, for, for instance, you know, I, I know someone that, that was in an adulterous relationship, but they thought that God had blessed that um, because both of them went to church. And I'm going, that's I don't, deception. I don't think you can even, I don't think you can not know. Well, I think the Holy Spirit comes up inside yeah. of you and goes, uh -huh, this bonk, is the bonk. wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. Because there is ways in which, you know, you are convicted of the things that you do wrong. I mean, he, you're just not paying attention that's it. if you're deceived in that. Okay, back to the point. No deception. No deception. Third, there was obviously a spirit of greed. Mm. on Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, let's do Acts 5, 3 again, this time in the New Living Translation. Okay. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell, as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. And that is really the key right there. Because greed will mm -hmm. make a liar out of you. Wow. It will make a liar out of you. Oh, wow. Luke 12, 15 in the New International Version. Mm -hmm. Watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. That's the truth. Probably. I looked up the word greed. Um, I did a search on Bible Gateway. And I looked several different ways. The word greed is not in the King James Version of the Bible. It is not. Um, but I, when I looked it up, 
what I found was that covetousness, covetousness, covetousness. Thank you. You said that better than I did. Is actually the word of choice. Luke twelve fifteen says. Mm. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Covetous. Covet I can call you that say King the word. James pretty you good. Say the word. Covetousness. Thank you. Uh, and Strong's Concordance is defined as greedy desire to have more, especially what belongs to others. Covetousness and, and avarice. avarice. Yeah. You know, they wanted to have. They wanted to have more, not j they wanted to have uh, what Barnabas had gotten. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were greedy for recognition of being good people. And that... Mm. According to covetousness, 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 as defined Why am I in, having trouble with that word? Covetousness. Covetousness. Go ahead, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you know the word. Um, in the Random House Dictionary, it's defined as inordinately or wrongly desirous of wealth or possessions Greedy. Mm. And one other definition that I saw, according to Word.net, had avarice and greed are defined as reprehensible acquisitiveness. I did that one good. Insatiable desire for wealth. Now, there's some basic principles about greed that I want to talk about. One, greed's mm. an attitude. Yes. Greed is an attitude. Greed is uh, wants to direct your thoughts, desires, and actions. Greed is addictive. Greed is evil. Um, but there's several things that we need to understand about greed. Uh, being prosperous does not automatically make you greedy. That's right. Uh, having wealth does not in and of itself make you greedy. Mm -hmm. Being rich is not synonymous with being greedy. That's right. Uh, being greedy just, well, it doesn't always mean that you want more. Greedy sometimes means you want to hold on to what you got. Mm -hmm. and, and so greed is that way. Greed is not produced by money, right. but rather by a condition of the heart. Yeah, because there are poor people who are greedy. Truth of the matter is, let me just say this. I, you know, poor people are greedy. Uh, I've greed, seen poor people. I've seen greedy. poor people who are greedy. In fact, truth, I've seen more people, more poor people who are greedy mm -hmm. than I have rich people who are greedy. Um, true. True. You know, sad. And don't get mad at me. Just look around and see what I'm saying. Um, but see, greed is greed is is not about money. It's about spiritual priorities. Amen. And greed is an attitude before it ever becomes a lifestyle. Mm. Um, and it just makes makes a, makes a big difference. Um, but it's not clear. We know that they were greedy because they were wanting, they were coveting, they were deceitful. They wanted the recognition. And it's not really clear if it began with Ananias or Sapphira, but it is clear that they conspired together and that the enemy capitalized yeah. on their greed. Acts chapter 5, verse 2 in the Amplified. And with his wife's knowledge and conveyance, he kept back and wrongfully appropriated some of the proceeds, bringing only a part and putting it at the feet of the apostles. The New Living Translation says, with his wife's consent, he kept the rest. The Contemporary English Version says, but they agreed to cheat and keep some of the money for themselves. The Message Bible says his wife's far conniving in this with him. Mm. It's clearly obvious that both Ananias and Sapphira believe the devil's lie. Right. Their sin was exposed, and it cost them their lives. Um, here's what we need to know. If, if we've sinned, if there's been greed or anything else in our lives, we got to know that our sins will find us out. Yeah. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 3 in the Amplified. Whatever you have spoken in the darkness shall be heard and listened to in the light, and what you have whispered in people's ears and behind closed doors will be proclaimed upon the housetops. Now, you may think that, well, let me just say this. I don't I mean, I know who's here at church tonight. I don't know who all is watching on the Internet. If, if you think that nobody's going to find out what sites you're surfing on the Internet, um, well, you, you got to know that somebody already knows. Uh, the one who counts yeah, knows. Yeah, the most. And, and it grieves him mm. that you're doing that. Uh, and and if anything that's done in secret is brought to light. And, and you got to know that if it grieves the Holy Spirit, that you're headed for trouble. Yeah. And if you doubt that, well, just think about Ananias and Sapphira. And say nothing about the burden of carrying that. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, sometimes bondage. people say, well, the devil made me do it. Mm. You remember years ago, Flip Wilson? Oh, yeah. Uh, Flip, 
Flip, Flip Wilson, comedian Flip Wilson. And Flip Wilson sometimes would dress up. And one of his comic characters was named Geraldine. And Geraldine was a bit feisty, to say the least. In fact, today, if you've ever seen Tyler Perry's creation, Medea, uh, she would probably be the almost exactly the same. Yeah. Alter ego, almost the same. Yeah, she was funny. But when Geraldine got in trouble, mm. she would snap her head back and mm. was fond of saying, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. Is that good? That's very good. <laughs> I think that's a bit scary. It's so, it's so good. Yeah, In fact, I will confess. I will confess to you that we were we were just dating, yeah. I guess, when this was all popular. And I was going down visiting your mom, and your yeah. mom watched Flip Wilson. Yeah. Uh, mom and dad. And mom and dad did, and a lot of people did. Obviously, it's a very popular show. But I will confess that I actually bought her yeah. a Geraldine doll. The kind that if you pull it in the back, yeah, yeah you know, it would make these sayings. That must have be where sayings. I picked up that so well. And picked up all these sayings, <laughs> and I gave it to her. And because back then, I didn't know anybody. Because <laughs> I would never now give anybody a doll that said the devil made me do it. But uh, the point uh, is, I'm, I'm in a different level of revelation now yay. than I was then. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but And I loved you anyway. I know goodness. you did. Yeah, I know you did. But you still sound really good. Flip Wilson could make me laugh, yeah. but the reality is the devil can't make you do anything. anything. The devil cannot make you do anything. The devil mm -hmm. cannot make you to do anything. That's right. The devil cannot make you to do anything. In fact, you need to write down, the devil cannot make me do it. That's right. The devil can't. Um, now, he can only tempt us right. through, let me say it this way, he can only tempt us through anything that we haven't surrendered to God. Yes, that's right. If we haven't surrendered to God, then he can tempt us through. Anything that we haven't surrendered, he can do it. James 1, 13 through 15 in the New Living Translation. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, <clears throat> and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. For a believer to say mm -hmm. that the devil made them do something <clears throat> is to verbally confess that the enemy has control <clears throat> of their life. He absolutely has no control over our life right. unless we allow him to. That's right. That's the only way he does. Only what we give him. Uh, and see, he, he, uh, he can't make anybody do anything unless they choose to obey his voice. I wish I'd thought of that, but there's, there's a scripture that says there is no um, there is no temptation taken on a man, but what God supplies a way to escape. Amen. Amen. And so I'll have to Google that and, I mean, uh, put that into Bible Gateway well, and find But I think one of the things that's important to understand is one of the main tactics of the enemy mm -hmm. is deception. Yes. And the more we understand this strategy, the easier to be to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and not play in his hands. Exactly. And I th I tell you, when you realize the enemy is the one who is trying to get you to do wrong and not use, he wants you to use the world's principles. He does not want you to use God's principles because God's principles work. And so when you're tempted to do wrong, even if somebody has done something really bad to you, and there are people who do bad things, um, even when somebody's done something bad to you, to succumb and work for the devil just gives that person, you know, lets him get away with it, you might say. I mean, you you want to be able to take God's principles and apply God's principles because that's the only way, number one, you will have peace of mind, which is worth more than getting back at anybody. And the second way, it's the only real way to win, I mean, in this world. We, we live in the world, but we are not a part of this world. Wow. That's good. Back to preach. It, it just did. Um... God does not want us ignorant mm. of the enemy's devices. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians 2.11. That's right. We are not ignorant of his devices. Satan does not have the power. Mm -mm. Uh, we have no reason to fear Satan's power. Luke 10.19. Yeah. And, and Jesus took it away That's when right. he triumphed over him in the yes. resurrection from the dead. That's right. And he now, the enemy only operates in three levels. Three levels. And he has the ability to deceive, the ability to accuse, and the ability to tempt. That's all 
he's God. And in all of that, we, uh, you know, those abilities cannot affect us right. unless we open the, the door, door to it. That's right. And if we open the door to it, then we put ourselves in a position, you know, that's right. To be to, swayed. To be swayed in that direction. But we don't have to be, you know, we don't have to let it happen. What happens is we need to know our rights. Yes. We need to know, read your Bible, do what it says. Mm -hmm. We need to know what's in the Word. We need to recognize where attacks come from. Right. We need to recognize, see, if some greed, some attacks in the workplace are, are motivated by deception. Because, right. or they're motivated by greed. Because somebody wants the job you've got, or they want the recognition. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that every person, no doubt, most every person, at one time or another, has had somebody take advantage of yes. them. But the point is, once you understand your authority, Luke 10, 19 again. Right. Once you understand your authority, you have authority over all the abilities of right. the enemy. And and can he can no by, by no means hurt you. And there's nothing, I mean, I know that in the workplace, bad things can happen. I mean, people can take advantage of you and it looks like you will never win in this situation but we have to go back to the word and we have to apply the word to our situation where it says promotion does not come from the world it comes it neither comes from the the east the west and the north or the south it comes from god and he has ways of exposing and showing things that we may not think it'll ever happen you know i know i use joseph as an example all the time but the point of it is this, Joseph was doing everything right. I go back to, I know God puts these, you know, examples in the Bible to encourage us because we need to, and we need to be encouraged by it to do the word and know that in the end it'll work out. Joseph uh, was doing everything right. He had Potiphar's house running perfectly. It was blessed and Potiphar knew it. And when his wife uh, came after Joseph, it made Joseph look guilty. He was thrown into prison. It was no fault of his own. How many times have things like that happened? And yet he stayed the course with God and God raised him up bigger than, I mean, it makes you wonder, honey, really. It makes you wonder how many people could have been raised to places of glory that they never realized they could ever even attain if it, they had just stayed the course and not let that hurt and that pain in their hearts make them do something ridiculous you know but it, it's a hard thing I'm not saying it's easy to turn you know when somebody's turns their back on you and and I mean turns and looks at you and gives you the sneer and turns and then turns to the boss and gives them the smile about how wonderful they are and they took everything that you had but God but God okay. can bring it out if we are faithful I mean, we have to we have to be faithful, but if we are faithful to Him. There's nothing He can't do. You know, one of the things and everything. Wow. What you just said is powerful. I think you know when I was writing this, honey, and then you and I talked about it. I was going, Lord, okay, well, this is a little different than what I would normally teach, for an, an an area. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, Lord, what about all this <laughs> with Ananias and Sapphira and and the, and the and see they they coveted what Barnabas had. They were deceptive to get it. Right. They were greedy. And and what the Lord showed me was that's what people deal with every day. Yes. In the workplace now, people deal that's with that. That's the world right so now. So we need to understand through this, we can understand how to overcome it. Right. And not fear. Yeah. We don't want to be like you know, Job 30, 20, uh, what, 325, where he says the thing that I greatly, greatly feared has come upon me. me. Um, see, if the enemy can put fear into our mind, then he has the ability to take advantage of us right. in every situation in the ability. workplace. Uh, but he cannot cause fear to remain in our mind mm. if we know how to cast it down that's right. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's what we have to do. That's right. um, Satan may have the ability to tempt, accuse, and deceive, but we have the power Amen. and the authority over all of that. That's right. And that's what we need to exercise. Because the only absolute power left on planet Earth is the power of God which dwells in mm -hmm. each of us. Ephesians 1, 18 through 20. Yeah, this is a part of my daily confession. Having the eyes of the, I personalize it. Having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you 
and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones, and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited Damn, and look. surpassing greatness of his power in and for us, in us and for us, who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ, and he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. See, we are seated far above all the principle, and I love the way the Bible says it. It says in Ephesians, we are not just seated above, we are seated far above all principalities, all powers, all of these things. But see, the enemy wants to make you think that your problem's so big that your God is too small. No, the problem is so small because your God is so big. Oh, but yeah. he wants to zero in, you know, and make you think and deceive you into making wrong choices when, you know, I could think of I can think of so many biblical examples to just I could preach until eight o'clock on the biblical examples, you know, David cutting off the robe of Saul. I mean, you know, and his heart smote him, it says, because he knew that he had touched God's anointed and he went out and he apologized. I mean, there's you know, example after example of how God, I mean, brought people out and he put them in there for our edification, for our, you know, be able to confidence of knowing. That's why the enemy attacked this tonight. Because he, we, the sound system had all been checked out. We were all ready to go. When we turned it on, it wasn't working again. It's just the enemy. You know, he's the prince of the power of the air. You have to take that dominion. We just didn't know till we got here take that dominion and he, we were going to make sure that this you know got broadcast because it is so important this information is so important for us to know it really is and, and the truth of the matter is it had been checked out it was fixed it was Absolutely working great working great so it was just that the enemy did not want this that's talk. right I uh, he that. does not want us wise to his wiles mm -hmm. to his deceptions but he went, he loses, we win. That's right. I mm -hmm. love this. The immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power. In us. And in Elizabeth. Course. Hallelujah. That's right. In Ruth, in Osaka, in Peggy, yeah. in Camilla, in Tim, Elaine, <laughs> in Randy and Laurel, and yeah. Al and Janine, and Diane and David, and everybody. That's right. And, I'm, and, and, and I, know, I know I didn't mention a lot of people, so don't get yeah. mad at me. Uh, but, I didn't mention but it's you. in you. You personalize it. it. Make it, you know, make that personal to you. We need to get excited because the same power that, raised, that we celebrated last yeah. Sunday night, the Amen. resurrection of the dead. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Hallelujah. 24-7. That's right. 365. And we, have, we just need to stay plugged in. We need to be abiding in the vine. And, and the devil didn't make you do it. That's your right. problem is not your supervisor. Your problem right. is, is not flesh and blood. It's principalities, right. powers, evil rulers, and spiritual weakness. Understand that. Take Amen. dominion over it. Pray for them more than you talk about them. Yes. And in fact, don't talk about them. Pray for them. That's right. And, and it'll turn things around. Yeah. See, the enemy wants to take your mouth and use it for evil against you. Yeah. I mean, that's what he wants to do. And you need to cut it off and spit in his eye i mean you know really i mean you can cut off the enemy with the words of your mouth hallelujah, hallelujah. i could i'm telling you i'm fired up i know you are well i am too truth. you're sitting close uh, <laughs> it's the truth I know. I know so help me god amen according to his word that's right amen a couple of things one yeah. um on the 20th of april if you live in the DFW area, if you want to drive in, fly in, walk in, crawl in, whatever you need to do. Whatever. I'm having a spiritual entrepreneur gathering yes. at uh, from 9 to noon on Saturday, April 20th. It's on our website. It's on our website. You can register for it. Uh, the registration is $50 a person, $75 for a couple. But for the registration, you get a copy of the new spiritual yes. entrepreneur information you system. Want that. And you need to make sure you've got that. Uh, in addition to that, you also will get uh, an album with a CD, that, and you'll get a CD every month mm -hmm. for the last nine months of this year, and mm -hmm. uh, that will not be available to anybody else mm -hmm. that does not have the Spiritual Entrepreneur Information System. Uh, you can register for it. I'm also doing a meeting in Raleigh on Saturday, May 4th, Saturday, May 4th, 
and I believe it's at the Holiday Inn at uh, RDU at the, out at the airport. I think it's where the meeting's going to be. There'll be an email going out this week. I'm doing one in Greensboro uh, on May 1st, and um, I don't know the location on that. They'll be but on the website. They'll be on the website. Those three meetings in North Carolina will be arranging others to go and be a part of, so make sure you check those out. Mm -hmm. um, I want to tell you, we're getting incredible responses yes. from our Rich Thoughts for Breakfast phone calls. Oh, yeah. Life-changing. And so if you're not calling in, you need to do that. 7.30 every morning, mm -hmm. Central Time. Right. And, um, and if you can't call in live, you can listen to the playback. That's right. The numbers are at heraldherring.com, and you can get the information. But uh, not only listen, but invite your friends to do so yes. as well. Indeed. Yeah, amen. And um, it's, 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 good. it's, it's, it is. If it's you want to be uh, a part of, we have a little email from TLC, you know, today, if you want to be a part of that, our church, Triumphant Life Church. Um, or if you want to, if you don't get the Rich Thoughts email, which I'm sure everybody does by now, on Wednesdays, just, it's lots of, just, oh, we have great testimonies on that. The other thing I want to tell you is not only is the Spiritual Entrepreneur Information System available, Mm. However, well, in addition to that, you're about halfway through the new book. I am. I'm working on the book, new book. The new book, Rich Thoughts after for that, Breakfast. Rich Thoughts for Breakfast, Volume 1. Yeah. And it's all it's good. the calls from the month of January. Right. All of them in one book. Good. And uh, so that you can go through it. I, I, was, uh, I was admonished by my friend, Pastor Dwayne Broom from Orlando. Yeah. He's he so told sweet. me, he said, you need to put it in the book. He said, I listen. He said, I play back. So he said, but listening to you is like trying to drink water from a fire hydrant. He just can't do it. Can't that. get it all. Can't, can't get, get it, it all, all, he said. So He's such a sweetheart. We're going to put it in. We're going to yeah, put it in. He encouraged call. us, so we're going to do it. One other thing up at the top, it says, sow a seed and yeah. just ask God if today is the day. He'd have right. you sow a seed. And I want to tell you, I, 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 I don't apologize for the quality of this tonight because it just showed me how important this teaching is. Yeah. This teaching is going to be in the Rich Thoughts email this week. Right. And you need to make sure you go over it. you got the outline on the bottom of the screen. Check it. Send us your prayer request. And know that from the bottom of our heart and the yeah. hearts of everybody here, we uh, we love you. Yes. And we appreciate, we appreciate all you of hanging you, in there with us. Everybody that's here tonight and everybody on. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're preaching to the cream of the crop. That's it. Hang in there and... Amen. Stay steady. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen.